Well, good day. This is Function Formulas. We're going to learn about sum, average, max, min, count, and count A. If you wanted to add up all these April numbers all the way from B3 all the way down to B12, you could say, well, hey, I know how to add things up. You add things up, you do the equal sign, and then after equals you say, I want to add this one plus this one plus this one, and you just keep going until you add them all up because I know how to add them up. I can use an arithmetic formula and just keep adding them up. Well, what if you have 360 mortgage payments? What are you going to add up 360 numbers like this? No, nah, there's got to be there's got to be an easier way. Let's backspace all this stuff. We got to figure out how in the world are we supposed to add all these things up? Well, the first thing we have to know is something about a group of cells. A group of cells is called a range of cells, a range. Here's a group of cells, starts at B2 and goes all the way to B14, and that's called a range of cells. And I would write it down as B2 all the way to B14. And you write that B2 colon B14, and that colon means all the way to. You have to shift to make a colon, don't you? What about these blue cells? These blue cells are in a group. They start here at D3, and they go all the way to H3. So I would write D3 colon H3. That's the range of cells, the group of cells. What about this one? It starts here at E7, and it goes all the way down, and it goes all the way across. Well, how are you supposed to do that? Well, you do that by expressing both corners. You can start at this corner, for instance. You would say E7 all the way to G12. You could do the other corner. It doesn't matter which corner you do, but you have to do corner to corner. So I would type E7 all the way to, that is E7, colon, G12. And that's called a range of cells. That's going to help us a lot when we want to try to add these numbers up. When you want to try to add these numbers up, you should use a function formula. A function formula starts with an equal sign, just like any other formula does. And the function for adding things up is sum. The answer to an addition problem, when I was in third grade, they taught me, that's called the sum. The sum is the answer to an addition problem. There's no spaces. After the M, you put a parenthesis. That's a left parenthesis like this. And it says, what range of cells do you want to add up? So I'll go up here, and I'll hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse, hold down the mouse. And look, they typed it for me. B3 all the way to B12. Now you could put a parenthesis on the right hand side, but you really don't have to. If you leave it out, Excel will put it in for you. Just enter. 1,687. That was the sum formula, S-U-M. Let's go do the average. Maybe I want to average out these black numbers. I'll do the equal sign and I gotta put in a function formula that will average, and it's not S-U-M. To do average is average, A-V-E-R-A-G-E. -E. Then a parenthesis, and then you gotta go tell them what do you want to average out. I want to average out these black ones. So I'll hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. There I go. I'm not even gonna put the parenthesis on the back, I'm just gonna enter. The average is 169. Max is what is the biggest number. In a big long list, I want to find the biggest number. So I'll start with an equal sign, and then I'll do the function formula. It's not SUM, it's not average, it's max, M A X, for maximum. Then a parenthesis, and if you want to get all the max, you just go like this, say that looks pretty good, enter. The biggest number is 425. So if I look closely at these black numbers in April, I'd find the biggest one is this one, 425. He found me the biggest number. Find the biggest number between B3 and B12. Do you see how to read it up here? Find me the biggest number in this range, B3 all the way to B12. Let's go find the smallest number. Starts with an equal sign, and then it's MIN, min or minimum. Then it says, what cells do you want? I want those same B3 all the way to B12. Enter. The smallest number is 92. And if you were to look over these black ones very carefully, you'd find the smallest one was 92. The next one is count. We'll do equals, and the function formula is count. This is a word that Excel knows. You can't go around making up your own words. Count, and I'll do this. I'll do all these numbers right here, and I'll enter, and let's see what we get. It says 10, so I'm thinking, what in the world does that mean? I know what the total is, that is add them all up. I know what the average is, it's the middle number, the average number. The biggest number is max, the smallest number is min, but what in the world is count? 
It says 10. Oh, I get it. There's 10 numbers. Count how many numbers. Count how many numbers. What if I delete one of them? Let's take this 150 and we'll just drag the handle into itself. We're going to delete it. Oh my gosh, the count is down to 9. What if I do this 425 and I delete it? Uh-oh, the count's down to 8. Now let's find out what this last one is. Count A. A stands for all. Equals count A. Parenthesis. Let's go get them. We'll go down there like this. Don't even have to put the parenthesis on the end. You just press enter. He'll do it for you. It's the same number 8. So what is this A for all? A for all means count not only numbers, but count words. Well, there's no words up there. So let's type a word like uh, ABC. That's a word. Enter. Now the count is eight numbers, but if you count everything, both numbers and words, it's up to nine. What if I say uh, mark? Enter. Now the count is still eight. There's eight numbers, but count A, A for all, counts both numbers and words. Let's delete this 168 and see what happens. Does count A, does it count blank cells? No. It says of all those cells, nine of them have something in it. Regular count just says there's seven numbers. It only looks for numbers. Now I think I'll highlight all these things. I'll grab the handle and I'll pull it across. What do you think is going to happen? It'll give me the right answers for everything. This was the sum of B3 to B12, but this one is C3 to C12. And this one is D3 to D12. Over here, the average was B3 to B12. But over here, it's C3 to C12. And over here is D3 to D12. Let's put some numbers back in there. I don't remember what they were. It really doesn't matter. We'll just put some random numbers in there, and we'll start this. We'll do it a different way. I'll delete all these red numbers, and we'll put the formulas in, in a different way. Just press delete on the keyboard. Now I'm going to click right here, and that's where I want the answer to be. I want to add up all those black April numbers. And instead of typing equals, and typing S, and typing U, and typing M, and typing a parenthesis, I'm not going to do that at all. I'll get the computer to do it. So I'm on the Home tab, and way over there on the right-hand side of the Home tab is the Auto Sum button. I'm going to find the Auto Sum button. It has a sigma character, some sort of Greek letter, and it has a drop-down arrow, and it says, Would you like to sum things up? Yes, I would. I'll give it a click. Let's see what it does. I'll get back over here, and we'll see. Oh, look what it put. It says, Do you want to sum up B3 all the, B, all the way to B12? Yes, I do. Just press Enter. That's all you got to do. Let's go do the average. I'm not going to type equals. I'm not going to type A-V-E-R-A-G-E. -E. I'm not going to do any of that. I'll just find the home tab. I'll go find that sigma button. There it is. It's got a drop down. It says, you want to do the average? Yes, I do. I'll give it a click. Let's slide over there and see what it did. It says, do you want to do the average of B3 all the way to B13? Oh, no, I don't. I don't want to go to B13. I only want to go to B12. So it didn't do a perfect job, but it did a pretty good job. All I have to do is change the 3 to a 2. Average out B3 to B12. Yes, I do. Enter. Let's go find the max. Can I do the same thing? I'll just go over there and see if that auto sum has a max on it. Oh, yes, it does. Max, it also has a min. Let's just do the max. We'll slide over and see what it does. There it is. It says, do you want to do max of B3 all the way to B14? No, I don't want all the way to B14. I only want to do to B12. So I'll just highlight the black ones. I don't even have to type the four. I don't have to backspace it. I just highlighted it myself and then enter. Min. Let's go do it. On the home tab, go find the auto sum. Give it a click. I want to do min. And let's see what it did. It says, do you want to do min of B3 all the way to B15? Well, not exactly. I'll just highlight the ones I want, the black ones. That looks pretty good. And then enter. The smallest number is 92. I can do count. Count will count numbers. Isn't that right? Count will count numbers. Home tab, auto sum. It says, do you want to count numbers? Oh, look at that. Count numbers? Not count everything. It won't count words. It's regular count. Let's go see what it does. Over here, it's going to give me the regular count. It says, do you want to count B3 to B16? No, I don't. I only want the black ones. I'll highlight the black ones, and I'll enter. There's no special way to do count A. Did you notice this? When you highlight just these black numbers, then down on the status bar at the bottom, it'll tell you, hey, if you were to add those numbers up, the sum would be 1452. If you were to count them, the answer would be 10. If you were to average them, the answer would be 145.2.
And look at that. That's exactly what the answers are. If you right click this status bar down at the bottom, you can say, What do you want to look at? I want to look at the minimum. Let's do that. And sure enough, over here it'll tell you if you were to do the minimum, the minimum would be 92. So it sort of gives you a little preview of what the answer is going to be right there on your status bar. Let's do some quick examples to see how this works. Here's a group of students and they all want to know what their test score is. They want to know what the average is. I want to average out all of Kayla's stuff. So I'll find that auto sum button and I want to find the average. Auto sum, there it is. I'll say I want to find the average. The machine will say, do you want to find the average of B2 all the way to F2? Yes, I do. Enter it in. Now I can just grab that answer and pull it all the way down. Now, there is a faster way than that. You don't really have to do it that way. Watch this idea. Once you get the answer once, and it's got a nice long list, get on this copy handle, and instead of dragging down the copy handle, just double click the copy handle. Watch this, double click. Oh my gosh, it did them all for me. Isn't that great? It only works on columns. It doesn't exactly work on rows, but it's pretty functional. I like it. If I wanted to find the average of test one, maybe I'm the teacher and I want to find out did test one do pretty well or was the average of the class pretty bad. So I click where I want the answer to be. I'll go over and find that auto sum button. I want to do the average. I click on average and let's see what it does. It says, do you want to do the average of B2 all the way to B21? Yes, I do. Enter. Now before what I could do is I could just double click this little thing and it would put all the answers, but when you're doing a row, horizontally like this it won't fill in when you double click it watch I'll try to double click it nothing happens I'll double click again nothing happens so that little trick of double clicking the fill handle only works if you uh, are on on a column going up and down here I go ready I'm gonna double click hey that's pretty nifty let's find some practical uses of the max formula so I've got this document and it's a list of everybody who's turned in their money and some people have turned in their money and some people haven't turned in their money and there seems to be quite a bit of people on this list it starts up here on row one that's Kayla who hasn't turned her money in yet I don't know what her problem is and it goes all the way down to 165 and I want to know which person has turned in the most money so far so I'm gonna do that max formula but the little buttons not gonna help me too much because I've got empty space watch what happens if I'm on here and I try to do max I'll go over to the auto sum button I'm going to try to find the max. Here it is. I'll give it a click and I'll scoot over so you can see what I'm doing. And it says, do you want to find the max of these two above you? Well, no, I don't really want the two above me. So I'm going to highlight them all. Probably the fastest way to do that since I know it's C1 is just make it C1. Enter. It says the biggest one is 291. So I want to know who was 291? Which person up there was 291? So for that, I'm going to go over to the find. I'll go over to find like this. Can you barely see it? Find, and it says, what do you want to find? I want to find 291. So I'll type 291, and I'll do find next. Let's scoot it over so if you can see, maybe it ran into 291 someplace. And hey, it sure did. Look at that. 291 is Kristen, but maybe there was a tie. Maybe there's another 291. So far, I know it's Kristen. 291. I'll do find next. And it didn't go anywhere. It stayed right on 291. I'll click it again. It didn't go anywhere. It's still on 291. I know there's no ties. There's nobody else that's got 291. So I know that Kristen is the one who's turned in the most money so far. Let's go look at Min. Well, here's the same long list. And I'm going to find the person who has turned in the least. Well, so far, the person who's turned in the least is some turned in nothing, of course. But of the people who have turned in money, who's turned in the smallest? So I could do equals Min and I know it's C1 all the way to C165. I could put the parenthesis on the back, but I don't really have to. I'll just enter. It's 131, and I can do the same thing. I'll go to find, and I'll search for find and see if, who the 131 is. Let's go look at an example of count. Well, here's the same long list, and I want to know, of these 165 people, how many people have turned in money so far? How many of these people have a number? I don't care what the number is. I just want to know, do you have a number? And that's an example of count. I'll do equals count. I only want to count numbers. I'm not going to count blank spaces or words. And it's going to start in C1. It's going to go all the way to C165. I could put a parenthesis on the back, but it really doesn't matter. 
enter it in, it says there's 87 people who've turned in money so far. The other ones are all blank. Let's go look at count A. That is count all. Here's a list of some of the people who've died in Iraq. Some of them are 22 years old or less. Starting on D2, I put an X next to each one that is 22 or less. And I want to count up how many X's are there. Now count will not help me because count only counts up numbers and these are not numbers. So I'm going to remember it starts at D22. Let's scroll on down to find who the last guy down the list is down here. The last guy is Nathaniel Hart Jr. And I'm going to add up, I'm going to count up how many X's are there. So I'll do equals count A, A for all, because A will count words. Give me the parenthesis. I know it starts in D2, and it goes all the way to, looks like D180, doesn't it? 180's right there. Enter. There's 60 people like that. On the list that I have, 60 people are 22 or less. Let's go look at another max example. Here's a list of radio stations and the number of contest entries each radio station had. This radio station, KDIO, is in Ortonville, Minnesota. They had 174 people enter the contest. So if I go all the way down to the bottom, I want to find out which radio station had the most contest entries. So I'll scoot it over like this so you can sort of see what I'm doing. And I want to know of all these numbers in the I, starting at I2, I'm going all the way down to I-1001, I want to know which one of those radio stations has the most entries. So should I use count or count A or max or sum? How am I going to find out which one has the biggest number? The biggest number is max equals max. And it says start in I-2 and go all the way to I-1001. You don't even need a parenthesis on the back, just press enter. The one that has the biggest is 199. So of all these thousand entries, starting in row 2 and going all the way to row 1001, which one is 199 entries? And so I could go up and do a find, couldn't I? Find is the fast way to search through and find which one it was. Let's look at another example of men. Here's my list of military men again, and I want to find out which one is the youngest. Of all of the ages, which one is the youngest? So I'll scroll down to the bottom, and I'm going to find out. It says, who was the youngest? How am I going to find out which number is the smallest number? Should I use sum? I don't want to add up the ages. Should I find average? I don't want to find the average. I want to find the smallest number. Should I do equals smallest? No, that's not even a word that Excel knows. Equals min. And then I'll say it starts in C2 and it goes all the way to C180. Parenthesis on the back, it's really unnecessary. It says the youngest person is 18. So I could do a find. Let's go do that because I know there's more than one that's 18. So I'll go to the Home tab and I'll scoot over here and I'll show you this. I'll go to Find. It says Find. It says, what do you want to find? I want to find uh, people who are 18. Find Next. And so it found one right away. Let's go see who it is. Here's a fellow, Andrew. He's a Lance Corporal, and he was 18. I wonder if there's any other 18s. Let's do and find next. It found another one. It says Reuben was 18. He's a private. Let's do another find. It's back. It's another one. Lance Corporal. His name is Corey. I found three 18s. Let's do another find. It's back. It's David Evans. Can you see him? There he is. David Evans is 18. He's a private first class. Let's do another find next it found my answer let's do another find next it's back up to Andrew so let's go see Andrew was one and then Reuben is two and then Corey is three and then David Evans is four my answer doesn't count so there's four and if I do it next I'm back up to Andrew so I found there's four of them let's see how these formulas work in a business setting Here's a trial balance for the Sloan Realty Company, and I want to add all these numbers up. Starting here at B3 and all the way down here to B18, I want to add all those numbers up. How can I add them up really fast? The fastest way is to use that function formula, the sum formula. And the fastest way to do that is to use the auto sum. I want to add them up, so I'll do sum. It says, do you want to sum up B15 all the way to B18? No, I don't. I want to sum up this one, B3. So I'll just hold it down, hold it down, hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. And now why do you think it stopped? 
It stopped because it saw a blank one, but I didn't want to stop. So here's B3 to B18. I'm going to enter. 47, 8, 90. Now, if I take this formula and copy it straight over, what's going to happen? This formula said B3 all the way to B18. Can you see it? B3 all the way to B18. That is, the ones above me. It said add up the ones above me. So if I take this and copy it over, it's going to add up the ones above me. There you go. Just like a good accounting equation, they're both balanced. Things look great. Let's look at an income statement. Here's an income statement for the same Sloan Realty, and it's got expenses, and it says down here what's the total expenses. They want to add up these numbers right here. So I could use the little auto sum, but hey, let's just do a practice. Let's just do equals sum parenthesis and then go get them. I want to sum up these right here. You don't even have to put the parenthesis on the back, just enter. Now to find the net income, that is the revenue, minus the expenses. Now is there a function formula for subtracting? We have not talked about one, have we? So let's just do the simple arithmetic. We only have two numbers. What about equals this one minus this one? See, I did the minus sign. This one, enter it in. There it is. The person made $17,550. Last is the balance sheet. Let's go look at the balance sheet. Well, here's a typical balance sheet. And the first thing they'll want us to do is find the total current assets. They want us to add up these total current assets. And so there's quite a few numbers there. I'm going to use the sum formula. Let me go out there and grab it really fast. Can you see that? I'm going to click sum. This one, it says, do you want to sum up nothing? Well, he didn't know what to do. There was no numbers above. So I'm going to say, these are the ones. Highlight them. There you go. Those are the ones. Enter. Now it says that it's time for depreciation. It's got two depreciation numbers. Let's add up these two depreciation numbers. They're just simple arithmetic. Equals this one plus this one. Enter it in. Now we had assets and we had depreciation. We're going to subtract the assets minus the depreciation. How do you subtract? Equals this one minus this one. Enter it in. Now I'm going to do total liabilities. I got two liability numbers and I want to add them up. So I could do equal sum, but that's kind of a waste. Equals this one plus this one. Enter it in. There you go. Now it wants to know the excess income over withdrawals. Scoot it up a bit. There you go. Net income minus the withdrawals. So the net income is big, the withdrawals are small, and they want to know the excess. So I got to subtract those two. Equals this one minus this one. Enter. Now it says, what's the capital at the end? Here's the capital she had at the beginning, plus the income that she had. I'm going to add those two together. Equals this one plus this one. Enter it in. Now I've got to find the total liabilities and the owner's equity. Here's the total liabilities. Here's the owner's equity. Equals this one plus this one. Enter it in. And just like any good balance sheet, it balances. The total assets are equal to the total liabilities plus owner's equity. Well, hey, that's about all there is to it.